Riley Smith uh, from uh, Vegas in exchange for Vegas' own third round pick uh, next season in 2024, and then the selection of Braden uh, Jaeger at uh, 14th overall tonight. So, um, and two important parts of business for the present and the future, um, much in the way that we've kind of mapped this out and planned to, to do it. And so, uh, exciting day for us, and, and um, looking forward to continuing that tomorrow and then later this week. So, on that note, I'll turn it over for questions. Hi, Josh. Hi, Kyle. Um, First of all, how long have you been in talks with Vegas? I'm curious just how quickly this came together, and what is it about Riley that you thought was the proper fit? It's only been this week. Obviously, Vegas was uh, quite busy um, uh, until a couple of weeks ago, and, uh, and then enjoy their celebration, and then obviously start to uh, start to get to work on their off season. Kelly and I um, have a very good relationship, and so this week we started to have talks. We think Riley's a great fit because. Um, you know, he's, ex he's extremely um, reliable defensively in addition to being able to produce very reliably over 20 goals and 50 points in, in nearly every single season the last number, especially with Vegas. And then coming off winning a, a Stanley Cup and being a really important part of that, can kill penalties, can play left wing and right wing. Um, he did that in the playoffs for Vegas and, and uh, we view it to kind of be able to interchange him throughout our the top of our lineup. So. Um, with the cost being what it was, obviously this is a, a strange market for that. We just thought it was uh, something that was too good for us to pass up, and, and we're very excited about that. Kyle, uh, Braden Yeager, just uh, what did you like about him, and what stood out to you that you want to go with him at that 14? Uh, for, for us, with, with Braden, he was in a, in a mix of players that we were really hoping would, would drop down to 14, Seth. So uh, the things that we like about him are, are that you know he competed as a center in a really difficult division uh, against Winnipeg, against Regina, against Saskatoon, all really high-quality teams. Uh, they won a playoff series, and they fell to, to Winnipeg um, along the way in the second round. But he, he had to go against really difficult competition. He, he you know, doubled his assist total year to year, but I think more importantly, um, in addition to his production, was the way that he played defensively, the way that he drove possession out of his own zone, um, played the whole ring, skated through the middle of the rink with him, able to make plays, able to be the defensive conscience of his line while also still producing offensively. The scouting staff was very excited about him, and um, we were thrilled to be able to get him uh, at our pick. Yeah, Kyle, uh, just with the with the chatter that's been going on right now in the cap not cap not moving um how do you think league wide how busy it's going to be in terms of the trades and things in the next in the next seven to ten days it's impossible to predict um, i wish i could but it seems like it's going to be quite busy it could also be one of these situations size where you're expecting a lot, and then it, it maybe it goes a little slower than it has the last couple of years. And then we started to see that a little bit last year as you know, big time free agents went until August off the top of my head where they were still unsigned. And especially now, more and more teams as the years have gone on, their salary cap space has started to dwindle. At the same time, you have your own young players coming up, you want to resign and keep. You see a trade like uh, the, the Winnipeg and Los Angeles one this week where it's a good young player, really good young player getting moved and, and Winnipeg doing great on their return. It's those win-win type uh, trades for the, the great young players and then the, uh, the trades where you usually expect to pay more, get more um, for the more established guys. Um, and, and so we, we thought moving our move today was better than waiting till free agency and just the term and dollars on Riley were right. Uh, what can you tell us about where things stand with Tristan Jari and sure. Jason Zucker? And does the Smith trade affect what happens with Zucker at all? So what was the trade? Uh, oh. does, does that affect oh, what happens? Oh, the Smith trade. With... Okay, sorry. Thanks, Taylor. Um, we're still having conversations with all of them. It's, it's it's You're trying to have conversations with them, respecting of what they've done for the franchise in the past. At the same time, trying to get a read on, as different trades happen, different teams fill their needs, what the demand is going to be for all of your own players. Uh, with regards to the Smith trade uh, relative to Jason, I think we want to continue to build our depth. So we'll continue to engage with Eustace King and O2K and his group about it. It certainly doesn't close the door. I understand how important he, he has been to the team and uh, it is to the group. Uh, so if there is a solution there, as we kind of sort through where we're at, it's certainly not closed at all. Hey Kyle, uh, were you, did you get any calls regarding the 14th overall pick and was there anything that came across your plate that you had to strong consider? Yeah, there, there, there were calls, I think, especially as you get down. I think there are always calls that kind of come in, but um, nothing that really moved us to want to move away from, from taking break. Hey Kyle, yeah. um, what does this day mean for you and this team that 
you can now start putting your vision in place, which is to try to build for the present and the future, which is sort of what you did today with this trade and, and, and a draft pick. Yeah, it's, it's, the whole month has sort of been, um, you know, building up to, to this week, Dan, it's, you know, getting ready to meet the staff, um, you know, there's some great people uh, on the staff, and uh, Andy Socher and Eric Heasley have been a massive support, and earlier this week, we were, you know, we hired Jason, Jason can't be involved in the draft or free agency, so um, we'll, we'll look forward to having him be fully on board in mid-July or, or whatever was the negotiated date on that. Um, but you know, we, early in the week, we, we filled our, our need on the salary cap side with uh, Buki Mapufu from the LA Kings. And so we're starting to put the staff together and seeing the staff grow. And then also you get to actually execute on, on the different planning and different things. So the trade today and then the draft pick. And I think, I think it's great for the staff as well because it's obviously a little bit uneasy. There's been a lot of change and, and trying to actually get here and, and do work with each other and experience how everyone works together. It's, it's, been, uh, it's been very enjoyable. Uh, Kyle, oh, there it is. <laughs> Sorry, hi, Kyle. Uh, with the selection of Braden, how much did his position play a role in that? Are you trying to build the center depth of your organization as well? I think you're always trying to build your center depth, but he, he was he was simply the the top player on our board at the time we picked, um, which I know is the biggest cliche in, in all the sports where there's drafts, but. That was just the reality, and if uh, if his position had been different, it would have had uh, no impact on us. So it was uh, it was all good. It, it's it's much easier to fill those positions in the draft, but now we have to get to the development part and turn it over to Tom Kostopoulos and his staff and have them get to work with him. Kyle, uh, over here, sorry. Two, sorry. two, two, if I may. One, do you hope to come out of this draft with it being so close to the start of free agency? with firm idea of where you stand with the UFA guys in terms of having to move on or, or bring in? And also, do you have plans to, this summer, add more to your hockey ops department? And have you had talks with anyone at this at this draft about that? Um, so the, the, the first question, Rob, um, I think that it, until we sign a player or they sign elsewhere, that's there's just time that we can use. So. Um, you'd like to have a clear indication, but there's so many unknowns in the whole marketplace that it's, it's, it gets a little bit tough to do that um, overall. But I think every every day and every trade that happens, you learn a little bit more about what's happening in the marketplace and how that's going to affect your cap dollars, different opportunities that are out there for you to use your salary cap dollars. Um, you know, you know, you know, particularly with some positions, as other teams that you know have them uh, available start to fill them, how that's going to impact supply and demand and so we're focused on that as well and just trying to get a good read on it um, and then with regards to our hockey operations department i think the, the way that i kind of put things into buckets were you know when Vuki, we wanted to get him in and get him hired and rolling because it's an important time for the salary cap contract the cba compliance people uh, with the rest of it I, I kind of in my head have pushed it to july 5th which is our development camp will end and then we'll get to focus on uh, building out the rest of our hockey operations department and, and our people on the ground in Pittsburgh. Kyle, Riley Smith's been a pretty effective player off the rush throughout his career. Is that part of what made him appealing to you? And is it just a general goal for you this season to, to improve the Penguins off the rush? Uh, I, I think with regards to uh, generating offense, I, I think we want to. you always want to be a great team off the rush. You want to be a great team in zone. Uh, through whatever method you're going to play in zone cycle, driving play to the middle, and then you want to be a great team defending the rush and defending all of those things. So I think it's safe to say that we're trying to improve every single thing about the about the group. And with the acquisition of Riley, it was more how would he fit with our with our players uh, that currently are already on the roster, Danny. So um, all of those things were considered, yes, but I don't want to get too deeply into them because uh, that could kind of tip our hand for other stuff. Kyle, good to see you. Just wanted to ask about the free agency in general. What, what do you, how do you see the, the market? Um, some years there's, there's big names, some years there's not. This one seems like there's a lot of sort of you know, middle tier players. Sure. Is that just sort of a, a reflection of the flat cap and the teams extending guys earlier? And just how these big dates have kind of not become as big anymore? Sure. I, I think, Josh, the, what, what, what you've seen happen is teams, with their younger players especially, they want to get them locked in for you know eight years right at the end of their entry level. And it's sort of you know, depletes what comes, what actually gets the free agency, and 
think now you're seeing a lot more, I, I, I think, this is just, I, I don't know this for certain, but it feels like players want to sign uh, sooner and get locked in and that there's just more available in, in trade. It's, and I think that's frankly a result of the cap just staying flat and teams needing to adapt and adjust and be able to find a way to, uh, to be compliant while also remaining competitive.